scallops, I feel very minimal remorse for eating. Yeah. But now I want to move to shrimp, which are the next thing up that I'm I'm curious about. So let's let's get get, get right. to those Gulf delicious shrimp. Okay. So let me talk a little bit about that. First, the biggest obstacle people have to solving this problem of what has consciousness in especially in this moral sense, is not scientifically figuring out what consciousness is and scientifically figuring out what has it. It's the fact that we are built, we evolved as social animals to um, attribute consciousness to the things around us. We cannot help it. What surprised me about what you just said is I thought you were going to say is there is not sufficient data because I spent a couple of days researching shrimp and there is not that much data about shrimp. Right. Consciousness. Right. Shrimp, shrimp brains. Well, right. Shrimp nervous, brains. Nervous system. Right. Although, you know, um, shrimp are, uh, you know, arthropods and there's tons on crayfish and they're probably really similar. Crayfish and lobsters. Um, some of the initial work on the basic properties of neurons was done on, on crayfish. But anyway... Um, um, so it's super easy for people to look at a, anything, especially a moving agent, agentic creature and see consciousness in it. And this is essentially what everyone does. And so, you know, I refer to, we both refer to the, uh, question of whether octopuses have consciousness, literally everyone who says they have it, um, seems to say their reasoning seems to be, I just know it because I have spent time with them. Or they've seen my octopus teacher. Or that, you know. Their reasons have nothing to do with the actual octopus. It has to do with the social machinery in the human brain. Okay, everyone knows that their pet dog has consciousness. It might. Like, scientifically, that to me, that is plausible and it fits with the theories we're working with. But the real reason why people say that is because their social machinery attributes consciousness to their dogs. Uh, we are so prone to do that. Okay. So no matter where you go, there's a wonderful um, YouTube channel that tracks the progress of Leon the, um, the lobster who got rescued from a supermarket. And this guy has Leon in a tank. And it's actually really cool. It's, it's marvelous. And Leon has like grown and molted several times and he li li lives a wonderful life now. Um, <laughs> and, and he's got fans and everyone knows that Leon is a conscious creature with feelings and experiences. Why? Not because of any scientific evidence or reason. It's because human social cognition attributes that to the things around us if they behave in any kind of complicated agentic manner. Right. And so you're going to run into this. Like this is the essential way that people decide what they're going to eat and not eat. And so there are people who are going to look at shrimp and say, I just know that they're conscious. Like I had sea monkeys when I was young and they're my, they were my friends and I got to know them and I just know they have a soul inside of them. Um, so that's one, that's probably the, the prime way that people make this kind of decision. I think you're asking, you're hoping for a different kind of answer. Absolutely, I am. Yeah. Um, and there, all I can say is there are lots of different theories of consciousness. And if you rely on the theory that I work with, they don't count it. Shrimp don't count it. Like, you can go all the way up through the shrimp and probably fish and, like, they react to their environments. But I don't think they have, they don't think they process information about what a mind is or that they have conscious minds or that they have feelings. They don't process that kind of self-information. Um, they process sensory information. They process sensory information from inside the body and from outside the body, and they process movement control and so on. I don't think they have um, that uh, theory of mind type of information that we use when we say, I have a conscious mind. Um, so. Uh, if you use my theory, my theoretical structure, then you're good pretty darn far up the food chain. But there are other theories that you might choose to subscribe to instead that say, sorry, all the way down to the bacteria level, they're all conscious. And there's all kinds of theories in between that makes it very hard um, to make that decision. 
I am sorry if I'm being too pedantic by wanting to focus on the specific animals. Yeah. But while I, of course, recognize that you're a leading authority in the world, maybe the leading authority in the world on this, I think the leading authority on this theory of consciousness, it's vital to me that I understand why for each of these particular animals, it is not capable of suffering on this theory. And I I understand, I'm very comfortable with the scallops, but I would like to talk about the shrimp in particular. They have no susceptors, I know this. But they, so they have some mechanism analogous to the way humans detect pain. Yeah. But of course, with humans, as you laid out, it goes nociceptor, spinal cord, thalamus, cortex. Shrimp, shrimp don't have these things. Yeah. So I'm wondering just what it is about the shrimp's circuitry that leads you to cut the line off, say they don't got it. Well, I don't think they have attention in the same way that people do. I don't think they have a model of their own attention in the same way that people do. So I don't think they're capable of, like if you could somehow poke wires into the shrimp brain, extract information, and then translate it into English, you know, mm-hmm. the speech in 5000 that you plug into an animal and then you get the linguistic output. And somehow you could ask it, um, what is your experience? I don't think it would know what experience is because it's not processing that kind of information. So if it's in pain and you say, what is it like to ha- experience pain? It doesn't know. It's not It's not computing information in the domain of what things are like, what experience is. It doesn't have that. It doesn't have, that's theory of mind. It doesn't have that. So it's processing raw inputs that we call pain because they're inputs that signal damage, but it, it can't process this other layer of information. Like, why would it? Um, You have to go way higher. I think most amphibians lack that. Most fish lack that. Um, I think you have to get way higher up into the um, complexity uh, of, um, you know, like I said, some reptiles, mammals, and birds before you get to that. But when we look at a shrimp, is there something that you could point to if we pulled up a model or a diagram of its nervous system, you could say, here, this is where the structures that are necessary for it to develop this self-model is missing. That's what I'm kind of looking for because we're starting with the nociceptors. So it's good up to that point. Where is it that we're able to cut off the line and say, okay, it's missing this more advanced machinery? Well, it's a little hard because the shrimp isn't organized like a vertebrate. So you can look at vertebrates and say, well, they have this, but they lack that. I mean, you can look at a fish and say, look, it has all these nice components, but the um, telencephalon, the front part of the brain is barely there and it's lacking. It doesn't grow into a real cortical structure and it doesn't do this and it doesn't process that. Um, but you look at another mammal and it has, or another vertebrate and it has more of this and more of that. Uh, so it's not like the the shrimp has a primitive simple thing that lacks this that and that it's more like the shrimp belongs on a different branch right it's just organized differently it's organized around um ganglia and probably has a larger ganglion somewhere in there uh, that could nominally be called a brain but um it's probably mostly local distributed ganglia controlling different parts of its body right so there is as far as i know I think the shrimp is actually decentralized too. Yeah, there you go. I mean, I think that to suggest that the shrimp contains the theory of mind um, processing machinery to even encode or represent the information about what a mind is or what an experience is or what experiential pain is. Um is kind of silly. <laughs> like, there's no evidence. Yeah. There's no behavioral evidence from a shrimp that it does that. I mean, what? Well, it would be very odd to propose that hypothesis, let's just say. <laughs> <laughs>